Tired of not getting any harvest off your fruit trees? Let's take a look at a few of the most common pests and figure out what to do about them. Oriental fruit moths, or OFM, overwinter as larvae or under host trees and emerge as adults in April. In May, OFM lay eggs under the underside of leaves near the tips of branches. The freshly hatched larvae feed through newly emerged shoots, causing wilting of shoot tips, also known as flagging. The following generations of larvae feed on developing stone and pome fruit, entering near the stem and feeding down towards the core. The larvae of the last generation overwinter the following spring. Oriental fruit moth has become a major pest, in some cases damaging the majority of the crop. Some signs that oriental fruit moths are in your orchard include flagging and clear gummy frass on developing fruit. Since oriental fruit moths have four to five generations in one season, the population can swell out of control quickly. To limit the damage, follow this schedule. In March, cultivate the soil or run chickens through the orchard to destroy overwintering larvae. In April, put out mating disruption bands. The bands release a pheromone scent, making it harder for adult OFM to find each other and successfully mate. In May, prune out and dispose of flagging tips on stone fruits. This is mainly peaches. Starting in June and continuing throughout the rest of the season, gather dropped fruits, which often contain live larvae, feed damaged fruits to chickens, place them in a hot compost system, or remove them from the site. You can spray neem oil, spinosad, or BT as a control for OFM, but good timing can be difficult and is extremely important. All of the sprays target the short window of newly hatched larvae before they move into branch tips or fruit. You can monitor for good timing by using pheromone traps. The traps have pheromone lures that attract adult OFM on mating flights. The traps are lined with a sticky board that catches the OFM. The traps themselves do not have a significant effect on the populations, but only help to determine timing for sprays. To be effective, these traps must be checked daily, but knowing when OFM are on mating flights, you can precisely determine your spray window. Plum corculio is another pest causing major crop damage in pome and stone fruit. This pest has become the most significant challenge in pop orchards. The plum corculio overwinter as adults in soil or hedgerows near their host tree. The adults emerge around the time that apples bloom, between April and May. Five to six weeks later, plum corculio begin to lay their eggs in developing fruit, depositing a single pearly white egg and cutting a crescent-shaped slit under the egg so that the rapidly developing fruit does not crush the egg. The larva feeds within the developing fruits for two to three weeks before maturing and exiting the fruit to enter the soil and pupate. In August, a second generation of plum percolio emerges to feed on developing fruit for several weeks before overwintering in the soil. The crescent-shaped scar is the unmistakable sign that you have plum corculio and an egg is deposited. Fruit-containing larvae often become misshapen and fall to the ground. If they have a crescent shape but did not drop to the ground, most likely the egg did not hatch or the larva didn't deposit. Unlike the oriental fruit moth, when plum corculio larvae exit the fruit, they leave a clean hole with no frass or webbing. When adults feed on developing fruit, they leave a one quarter inch deep hole that can lead to scarring or rotting. Since plum corculio are rather clumsy as adults, you can attempt to use the shake method and control and monitor them. 
In early spring, lay a bed sheet or tarp out in the morning and evening under the suspect host tree. Shake the tree vigorously to knock off as many of the clumsy plum curculio. Dunk the sheet into hot soapy water for several minutes to drown the beetles. Gather and destroy all fallen fruit frequently to prevent larvae from tunneling into the ground. Running chickens through your orchard is also a fantastic way to deal with fallen fruit and larvae. Kaolin clay can be sprayed to create a protective, non-toxic barrier on the fruit, making an unsuitable environment for insects to land, feed, and lay eggs on. It should be applied starting at petal fall and reapplied every seven to 10 days after heavy rain for three to four weeks. Pyrethrin, a natural pesticide derived from chrysanthemums, can also be used to control plum curculio, with similar timing as the kaolin clay. Pyrethrin affects the nervous system of insects that touch or eat it, causing paralysis and death. Pyrethrin should be used cautiously, as it will also kill any beneficial insects that it contacts. Spraying at twilight will decrease the amount of beneficials affected. And finally, let's talk about aphids and scale, both sap-sucking pests. In pop orchards, aphids have been a frequent but relatively minor nuisance, whereas scale insects sometimes cause significant damage to crops, especially in plum trees and gooseberries. To survive harsh conditions, aphids overwinter as fertilized, frost-resistant eggs. However, the spring and summer aphids can reproduce without mating and give live birth, leading to rapid infestations. They spend most of their lives eating, feeding on all parts of the plant by piercing the plant tissue and sucking out the sap, sometimes becoming a vector for diseases. In fall, the aphids will again reproduce as tiny elliptical eggs and overwinter on and around host plants. Most scale insects overwinter as eggs under the protective covering of the egg parent. Eggs hatch into crawlers, which are yellow to orange for most species. Within days, the crawlers settle down to feed, with eggs carrying scale often staying in the same spot for the rest of their life. Feeding on plant nutrients, building a waxy protective covering, and injecting a saliva that may be toxic to the plant. Aphids give themselves away with the onset of curled and distorted looking leaves, often seen in late spring. Outbreaks of aphids can weaken or stress a plant. Damage from scale insects often leave their host plants looking stunted, yellow, and weak. Scale can leave reddish blisters on the fruit and lead to cracked branches and severe infestations. The honeydew of both aphids and scale attracts ants and can lead to the infection from a sooty mold that interferes with photosynthesis. Armored scales are much more challenging as they are resistant to all of these means of control. In the case of scale infestations, pruning and disposal of infested branches and twigs can be advisable. In the case of large infestations, a dormant oil can be sprayed in winter or early spring. In most cases, we have seen these natural controls effectively deal with aphid infestations before they significantly damage the plant. However, these natural controls can sometimes be fended off by ants who are using the aphid and scale honeydew as a food source. Due to the nature of the symbiotic relationship, ant management can also be a part of aphid and soft scale management. Spraying with strong jets of water, washing with insecticidal soap, and applying neem oil sprays and coating the bottom of a tree in tanglefoot can all help in managing these pests. So to recap, oriental fruit moth, plum corculio, aphids and scale are some of the main culprits wreaking havoc in our orchards. But by paying close attention and learning their life cycles, we can take steps to decreasing their population pressure and make sure we get a taste of the fruit.